Hi, I'm John Stevenson, and we're going to be looking at Egypt in the days of Joseph in our continuing study of the book of Genesis. Egypt was comprised, its major feature was the Nile River, stretching from southern Africa, the longest river in the world. I know if you, if you go to South America, they'll say the Amazon is, and I'm not going to quibble about the two. We'll at least say it's one of the longest rivers in the world. And it flows northward all the way into the Mediterranean. This is a, this is a satellite photo where the Nile River, and notice the sharp contrast between the desert on either side, and what you're seeing is the greenery of the Nile River Valley, but then, just before it gets to the Mediterranean, it blossoms up in, into a wide delta. Here's a, another aerial view of that Nile River, and you can see the river itself, but then the greenery, that area that is watered by the Nile, and then from that you can see nearby just the desert and there's a very sudden and severe contrast between that part of the land that's watered by the Nile versus the desert itself. So it was said that the Nile, and I think this is true, the Nile was the gift of Egypt. The Nile was what, it, what made Egypt a habitable land, otherwise it would have just been desert. And what you're seeing in the distance there is the escarpment. Uh, you've got the, the edge of the valley, and you go up over that, and that's not a mountain ridge. That's the level of the desert on the other side. The pyramids, when you think of Egypt, we often think of the pyramids. They were already hundreds of years old um, as Joseph comes to Egypt. They had been old already in Abraham's day, the time that Abraham had visited. And they had been long past the era of pyramid building, except that now, as Joseph comes to Egypt, the dynasty that's ruling here uh, has been saying, let's, let's go back to the good old days. Let's b build a few more pyramids. Now, they weren't the, the, the great giant ones, like the Great Pyramid, uh, that you're seeing here in this picture. They were much smaller and they were not made of the the same granite. Instead they were made of of, um, of mud brick. Which means that they did not survive. Um, you might find you know, this big pile of sort of broken down mud and that's what used to be a pyramid. It doesn't look like a pyramid anymore. If you walk past it you'll miss it. This then was the period of the Middle Kingdom. We normally date it, and you know, these I'm going to give some exact dates, but even in Egyptian chronology, sometimes they, they can be off by as much as 20 to 22 years. It depends where you made the astronomical observations that help set um, uh, our timeline on that. Um, but we're going to say uh, 1991, and this is all BC, to 1786, about those period, that's the period of the Middle Kingdom. But I need to back up to talk about what's the Middle Kingdom. You see, you see, you see we usually talk about Egyptian history beginning with an archaic period. That's uh, the beginning of what we call the dynastic era, when Egypt for the first time uh, became a unified country. And that gives rise then to the Old Kingdom, and that's dynasties three through six. That's the classical pyramid era. But notice that comes to a close before Abraham is even born. Um, and so that's, th that's the pyramid age. Um, the, the, you know, dynasties three, four, five by six, you know, we're closing that era. And after that, everything falls apart in Egypt. They go through an intermediate period where Egypt is no longer a unified country. But after that, after that first intermediate period, and there's going to be a couple others, um, after that first intermediate period, we have the Middle Kingdom period, and this is dynasties, well, 12, but really 11 going into that. So dynasties 11 and 12. Uh, and this is the time of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And this is the time when Joseph comes to Egypt. It's this period of the Middle Kingdom. Uh, they're not, they hadn't, they had stopped building the pyramids, but, but now they build a few more smaller ones out of mud brick. Uh, you know, they're, they're sort of trying to reclaim those old glory days, maybe n without a lot of success. And just to bring up the rest of the story, after Joseph, after the book of Genesis ends, we're going to have a second intermediate period where, again, things are going to be, be falling apart. And this time it will be outside invaders who come in and conquer Egypt, a Semitic group that are known in history as the Hyksos. They're going to they're gonna conquer Egypt. But, and they're going to rule for about 150 years. And then after that, they'll be driven out. And we'll have the New Kingdom period, dynasties 18, 19, and 20. And it's going to be during this period 
where the exodus is going to take place. We'll have Moses and we'll have the exodus. And Egypt will be at its greatest military strength in this new kingdom period. But then after that kingdom, uh, after that period la um, has, has run its course, then there will be a third intermediate period where, again, things are going to sort of fall apart. And after that, we'll still see Egyptian history, but they will nearly always be ruled by someone else. Either you'll have Libyans come in and take over, or you'll have the Assyrians come and take over, or you'll even have Nubians, the uh, 25th dynasty is going to be Nubians for the, from the south, or, or then the Persians will come and conquer. And so that Egypt will go from, from one conqueror to another after this. So, Old Kingdom, Middle Kingdom, New Kingdom. For Joseph's story, we're in the Middle Kingdom period. There was found, um, midway between Cairo, um, or ancient Memphis, which is where uh, the delta begins at the, at, the, at, the, you know, at the separation of the Nile River, um, midway between there and Thebes in the south, uh, there was found in a tomb known as the Beni Hassan tomb painting, uh, what we have pictured here, a picture of Semitic peoples, but they're not being conquered as they usually are in, in tomb paintings. In, instead, they are coming peacefully into Egypt. And it's striking because that's going to be the story of the Israelites coming into Egypt too. Now, I don't, I'm not saying these are Israelites. But they're also Semitic peoples, so maybe, maybe it's picturing Israelites, or maybe it's picturing someone else. But, but we see that same story of Semitic peoples coming and settling in Egypt. And, and the Joseph story is telling us how that took place. They will settle in a place in the Bible called Goshen, this area on the east side of the Delta region. Now, the Joseph story, and we'll cover this again uh, next time, but Joseph's story is going, it starts in Genesis chapter 37, where his brothers hate him, and then we saw that there was an interlude where, where Judah, um, he had, <laughs> he did some things he should not have do. He was, he was tempted um, and fell into temptation, but he's signified, especially by the birth of what are, what are sort of his children, but also uh, his grandchildren-in-law, sort of a strange situation, uh, he signified as the leader. And then we, the camera came back to Joseph, and we saw Joseph enslaved in Egypt. Um, he had not only been a slave, but, but cast into prison. And then he comes before Pharaoh with this plan to save Egypt, and he's made the number two man in all of Egypt. And, and that's going to cause, as the famine takes place, the famine will cause his brothers to come now to Egypt, and they will stand before Joseph. And he's going to maneuver the events so that his brothers will be put to the test, a test that they pass, a test of love for their brother, not for Joseph, because they think he's dead, but a, a test for Joseph's younger brother, Benjamin. After that, notice that this is going to be a, a study in contrast. We'll have um, not just the journeys of the brothers to Egypt, but the migrations of the entire family of Jacob now will come to Egypt, where before Joseph had, had come before Pharaoh with a plan to save Egypt, now Joseph comes before Pharaoh with a plan to save his people, uh, the Israelites. Now, there's not a lot of them. There's only about 70 of them or so. Um, but he, again, brings that plan to Pharaoh. Whereas before Joseph had been enslaved, now we read of Joseph enslaving the Egyptians. And it's a, a financial enslavement where they sell their their cattle, and then they sell their land, and then they sell themselves to the Pharaoh. And they become servants and slaves of the Pharaoh. Finally, there's one more interlude, and again, Judah will be, men he'll have special mention there, where all of the sons of Joseph, uh, there's prophecies over all of them, but in the case of, of Judah, we read about how the scepter will not pass from Judah. It's a leadership idea, a kingship promise that's given to Judah. And finally, the story will end where his brothers are afraid. After Jacob has died, his brothers are afraid of him, and he will put their fears to rest. But we'll look at all of that next time.